This is the part 3 2. What if Issei leaves Riastramori's peerage? No more time wasting, let's begin. Chapter 8 Enemies Tell Number Lies Issei woke up with a smile on his face as he hopped out of bed. Things were getting better once again. Irina and Zenovia had both been forgiven and had both showed true devotion to him. He felt tingly inside, just remembering how things went with Irina. He was really glad his childhood friend was back on his side. Walking into the bathroom, Issei turned on the hot water for the shower and once it was at a good temperature, stepped in. After showering, he grabbed a towel and dried off his body, before wrapping it around his waist and grabbed another one to wipe his face, standing in front of the mirror. Wiping the last bit of moisture off, he used it to wipe the mirror down to have a look at himself. As he pulled the towel away, he flinched. Ah, oh, what's the matter, not happy to see me, said the woman in the mirror. What do you want? Haven't you done enough? Growled Issei hatefully, staring at the visage of Rainier, his constant source of torment. Me, what have I done? I never hurt you, little Issei. Cooed Rainier. Issei growled, barring his teeth. What's the matter? Are you still upset you never got to feel my boobs? Is that it? Teased Rainier. Issei clenched his fist. Or maybe, you're just upset because deep down, you know that all of those girls, are just like me said Rainer darkly. Issei's fist shot out and smashed the mirror, cracking it heavily and leaving a hole in the middle, but he could still see Rainer's face around it. Will you die for me? Line break. Issei suddenly sat up sharply in bed. Damn bitch, grumbled Issei in annoyance, before feeling two mounds press against his back. NYA, was it the crow again? Asked Kuroka curiously, as she draped her arms around Issei. Yeah, muttered Issei relaxing his right fist that he had unknowingly clenched. You know, no matter what she did, you'll always have me. Heard Kuroka comfortingly. Yeah, muttered Issei, relaxing a little more. That's better. Besides who cares about her, or even them for that matter. Questioned Kuroka. You know, you can't fool me. Said Issei quietly. Hum, what do you mean? Asked Kuroka curiously. I know you want to fix things with Ko Sharon. Said Issei. I know, but I don't want to hurt you either. Agreed Kuroka, no matter what she did to me, she is your sister. The love for a sibling is something to cherish. Said Issei quietly, as is the love for a loved one. Added Kuroka, I know, said Issei, before going quiet. Well, how'd things go yesterday? I came by here late at night and felt the presence of an angel that wasn't you. Questioned Kuroka, Zenovia and I patched things up. After that, I came here, where Irina was waiting and we fixed things between us as well, maybe even more than that. Recounted Issei. Oh, is that so? Do I have competition? Joked Kuroka. No, the pieces of my heart you two hold are both very different. Irina was my childhood friend, before even all this, and you accepted me for who I am, even if it was also for your own ambitions, and took my virginity. Said Issei seriously. Hum. That makes it sound like you and I don't have a deep emotional connection at all. Said Kuroka, with a frown, only for Issei to turn his head and kiss her. You also love me and I love you, even if it is rather new. Added Issei. That's more like it, smiled Kuroka, before giving Issei another kiss. Thank God it's Friday. Oops, sorry about that. Said Issei, with a deep sigh, before apologizing to Kuroka, when he felt her wince. Well, you are an angel I suppose, I'll learn to deal with it. Said Kuroka, with a wry grin. Yeah, I'll try to be careful though, but now I need to go to school. Said Issei, as he tried to get up, only for Kuroka to swiftly move in front of him and sit. In his lap, are you sure you don't want to do something else first? Cooed Kuroka, looking at Issei with half-lidded eyes. Issei picked up the amorous Nekosho and put her on the bed, before getting up and heading to the shower. Kuroka pouted as Issei left her there and heard him turn on the water. She was about to leave, before Issei popped his head back in the bedroom. Well, are you coming or what? Asked Issei teasingly, before disappearing again. Kuroka gave a Cheshire-like smirk, before following after Issei. Line break. Issei walked into his classroom, with a small smile on his face and sat down at his desk, content. What are you so happy about? 
asked Motohama suspiciously. Eh, the usual, replied Issei. Usual, what would that be? queried Matsuda. Issei merely smirked, causing his two perverted friends to fume. Damn you Issei, they both shouted, to which Issei laughed. Morning Issei, how are you today? asked a very chipper Irina, as she stood to the left of Issei's desk. Morning Irina, how's my best childhood friend doing? replied Issei, causing Irina to beam. Great, the Lord's presence is very strong today, replied Irina happily. I'm glad, said Issei, with a nod and small smile, enjoying Irina's presence significantly more than previously. So how are you Issei? asked Irina curiously. Will you die for me? Issei flinched for the barest of moments, but Irina noticed it. Are you still thinking about the past? questioned Irina, with a small frown. Issei's expression soured for a moment, before he felt Irina place her hand on his shoulder. It's okay Issei, said Irina, before leaning closer to Issei. I'll never leave your side again, whispered Irina softly, while giving Issei a beautiful smile. Issei returned her smile once she leant back. Thanks Irina, I needed that, confessed Issei, which only caused his childhood friend's smile to grow. Any time, what are friends for? remarked Irina, before taking her seat to the immediate left of Issei. Turning back to the front, Issei was greeted to the sour expressions of Matsuda and Motohama. Another beautiful girl Issei, don't you already have one, stop hogging them all, complained Motohama, at the very least, share some with us, added Matsuda, with Motohama nodding in agreement. No, said Issei in annoyance, standing up from his chair and slamming his hands against his desk. If you want girls, get them yourselves. You both have traits that girls find desirable such as athleticism and intelligence, but instead, do nothing but watch stupid porn all the time. Shouted Issei, getting Motohama and Matsuda to gasp, and quite a few girls in the class to look at him in shock. Did Hyodo just say porn was stupid? Muttered a girl to her nearest neighbor. Blasphemy, shouted the two perverts. Yeah, well here is what I think about your stupid porn said Issei, as he stepped over to Irina and grasped her face. Issei, what are you do mmph asterisk, started Irina, only to be cut off mid-word, as Issei leaned down and pressed his lips against hers. The class gaped at Issei's brazen actions, while Matsuda and Motohama looked like they had just been stabbed. Issei decided to be slightly more adventurous in his kissing this time, and gently pushed his tongue into Irina's mouth, who allowed it after a brief moment. Irina moaned into the kiss, not caring that she was currently making out with her previously perverted and loathed by most, childhood friend, in the middle of their classroom, filled with their fellow students. To her, there was only Issei and herself at that moment. After a full 30 seconds of tongue jousting, Issei pulled back and spared a moment to look at Irina lovingly, before turning back to his former perverted brothers. And that's why your porn is. Stupid, it pales in comparison to a real woman declared Issei, before sitting back down with a smile, looking over to Irina, who had now regained herself and was blushing slightly, under the gazes of her fellow classmates. Well, I suppose you're feeling better now, commented a new arrival to the class. Issei followed the voice and saw Zenovia with her usual stoic expression. Yeah, I guess I am, said Issei, giving Zenovia a smile as well. Zenovia then pulled out a condom and looked at Issei. Too soon asked Zenovia curiously, while the rest of the class looked at her in shock. A little, chuckled Issei, to which Zenovia nodded before placing the condom back, wherever it was she got it from. As Zenovia went to take her seat, the teacher finally showed up just as the bell rang and class got underway. Line break. After a rather normal day of class, during which Issei spent a fair bit of time zoning off in thought, the day was over. Gathering his things and getting ready to leave, Issei was accosted by the two former exorcists, turned supernatural beings. Issei, can I come over now? asked Irina eagerly. I too would like to continue spending time with you for now. Added Zenovia, with a nod. Sure, why not? said Issei happily, after which the three left. In the classroom that the trio had just vacated, a certain green-eyed blonde was looking down at her lap unhappily. Issei, thought Asia sadly before grabbing her things and heading to the club room. Line break. As the two angels and devil neared the front gate of their school, another blonde, 
This one possessing blue eyes, was waiting for Issei, who stopped to listen to the figure. I Issei, may I speak with you? Asked Ravel timidly, a little surprised at seeing her romantic interest walking with two people, which he had previously denounced. Hum, sure, is it quick? Asked Issei, with a raised eyebrow. Not particularly, answered Ravel. In that case, follow me, we can discuss whatever it is at my new house. Said Issei coolly as he started walking again, now with three people following him. As the newly formed quartet left the school, a pair of violet eyes were staring at Issei's back intently. I don't know how yet, but I'm not letting the one man who accepted me for who I truly am, get away from me. Thought Akino determinedly, line break. As the group neared Issei's apartment, Issei quickly used his newly acquired senjutsu prowess to sense if Kuroka was there. After a moment, he confirmed she had returned back to wherever her group was, which Issei actually still didn't know. As the foursome finally reached Issei's room in the apartment block, which he owned alone, he let his three guests in, who all sat on his couch while he stood. So, what's up Ravel? Asked Issei casually, crossing his arms over his chest and leaning against the wall behind him, staring at his guests. Well, my mother would actually like to speak with you. I am not sure what for although I do have my suspicions. Said Ravel succinctly. I see, said Issei, rubbing his chin in thought. Well, if that's the case, I'd be happy to, maybe I'll be able to track down Saraorg and have that fight with him. Said Issei thoughtfully. If you'd like, I could set up the necessary preparations for you and alert Saraorg Bale of your intentions. Said Ravel quickly. Really, that would be great Ravel, thanks. Said Issei giving the phoenix a genuine smile, which made her heart flutter. Oh of course, it is only natural you take advantage of such a skilled organizer such as I. Said Ravel, with fake haughtiness. Hmm, if that's the case, how would you feel about helping me deal with all my opi dragon stuff? To be honest, aside from changing where the money is going, a lot of the other organizational stuff goes right over my head, I could use your help if it wouldn't be any trouble. Asked Issei modestly, I would be more than happy to, replied Ravel, which caused Issei to smile once again. Thank you Ravel, I'll truly be in your debt for this. It was a nightmare just doing the transfer, said Issei humbly, before letting out a chuckle towards the end. Leave it all to me, I will be the best manager ever, declared Ravel proudly. All right, in that case, if Saraorg is free, I'll come to the underworld tomorrow, considering it is the weekend said Issei, getting an attentive nod from Ravel. At that moment, there was a knock at the door. Feeling the presence of a certain annoying fallen angel, Issei frowned. What do you want Azazel? shouted Issei, loud enough for the faction leader to hear him. May I come in? asked Azazel through the door. If you are alone, sure, said Issei, after which the fallen angel entered. You have company, interesting company at that, commented Azazel, looking over the three sitting on his couch. What do you want? Asked Issei tiredly. Well, it isn't so much what I want. Rather, what someone else wants. It is rather sensitive information right now, so I will only say that someone not directly allied with us wants to meet with you. Said Azazel. Why do I get the feeling that you are leaving a rather crucial piece of information out? Asked Issei, with narrowed eyes. Come now, you must know I would never do that. Chuckled Azazel but it didn't fool Issei. Sai I can't say who this person is, only that they do have a rather high standing in the world. Said Azazel truthfully. I, see, said Issei slowly. Well, that's all I had to say for now, see you around. Said Azazel, before leaving. So, anything you guys want to do now? Asked Issei curiously, not particularly, since you said it is too soon for us to make a baby. Said Zenovia getting both Irina and Ravel to widen their eyes. Zenovia, you are still too forward, exclaimed Irina, s such improper behavior, commented Ravel appearing affronted. Any other suggestions? Asked Issei. After a brief pause, Issei proposed an idea. Well, we could always head to the underworld now. Maybe Saraorg is free and I can have the fight now, as well as seeing whatever Lady Phoenix wants. Suggested Issei. Well I don't mind but is it a good idea for two angels to come to the underworld? Asked Zenovia. True, such a movement could cause discontent, 
especially since some are disgruntled that the red dragon has now, defected, to heaven. They may try something, if not against you, possibly against Irina. Said Ravel hesitantly, that's fine, anyone who tries to fight me will understand why you shouldn't provoke those who can use your weakness against you, and if anyone tries to touch Irina, I'll smite them where they stand. Said Issei calmly, before growling towards the end. Irina's heart soared at this, with Ravel and Zenovia both hoping no one actually tried anything. Very well then, we can head off at once, said Ravel, as she stood up and motioned for the rest of them to gather, before utilizing a special magic circle, which could carry all types of supernatural creatures to the underworld. Line break, the four reappeared outside the Phoenix Manor. While Zenovia, Irina and Issei glanced around in interest, Ravel walked up to the gates and spoke with the guard stationed there. After a brief conversation, the gates opened and Ravel gestured for the three to follow her. Any problems? Asked Issei curiously, as he examined the land of the Phoenix clan. No, there was some hesitancy at your presence, but my assurance was enough to dissuade any ill thoughts towards you and Irina. Replied Ravel succinctly, as the quartet entered the manor. Irina and Zenobia looked around in surprise, while Issei simply raised an eyebrow. It is very lavish, commented Issei, seeing enough gold to buy a continent in the hallway alone. The ceiling was very high, easily more than 10 meters above ground level. The hallway was expansive, so much so, that it felt as though it was a room by itself. Dozens of phoenix statues made out of pure gold were placed every few meters, somehow able to remain solid even with the brightly burning flames within the mouth of each sculpture. Yes, well, it has been built upon by generations of Phoenix clan members. Some of the fixtures in the building are older than the current Satans and some are only as old as you. The Phoenix deals with regeneration from the ashes and this is reflected in the design of the structure. Explained Ravel, come, I will show the two of you around after I alert my mother. Issei, please remain here for someone to take you to mother requested Ravel, before leading Irina and Zenobia away. Issei stood there in silence, merely examining the luxurious hallway in interest. After a minute had passed, Issei's guide arrived and it was certainly not someone he was expecting. Hello, Red Dragon, we meet again, said Riser, one of Ravel's older brothers and someone who Issei had beaten the stuffing out of in the past. How are you Riser? I recall you had been traumatized by me somewhat queried Issei blankly, Riser grimaced at the reminder of his past, before moving past it. In any case, I will take you to mother, please follow me. Said Riser, before turning on his heel, with Issei following. As the two walked, only the sound of their light footfalls was heard. The tension was rather heavy between the two for different reason. Eventually, Riser broke the silence. I realize this is personal, but I am curious and given the state of things, I do believe I have some personal stake in this as well. Started Riser, before Issei interjected. Let me guess, you want to know what happened with Grimori, right? Questioned Issei, getting Riser to stop momentarily and face Issei, before walking off again. Grimori, how odd, such a cold manner of speaking. Commented Riser, cold, hardly, scoffed Issei, this being a woman you nearly killed yourself for. I find it hard to believe you would act like this. Said Riser. Ah, how surprising. Even you could see what she couldn't, hilarious. Droned Issei. At this point Riser stopped walking completely and turned to face Issei. What do you mean? What can I see that she couldn't? Questioned Riser in genuine confusion. Riser, you saw how hard I fought for Grimori, both during the raiding game and in our battle of single combat. Why do you think I would go so far? risk utter destruction, sacrifice parts of my body permanently, place my own being into danger the likes of which could end with my utter eradication. What do you think that means? Asked Issei, as he stopped walking as well. Well, initially, I thought you were merely fighting your hardest due to the famed Ramori kindness and that it was that which motivated you to push yourself to your limits. Began Riser, and what did you think it was afterwards? Questioned Issei, lust at first, but then I thought to myself, that is what motivated me which she found revolting. Answered Riser honestly, towards the end though, right before you defeated me, I saw something different, love. Finished Riser, I see, you saw that I loved her at that point, now, 
imagine me doing so over and over again, numerous times, each time, coming closer and closer to death. Tell me, don't you think that she should have realized I loved her by then? Asked Issei darkly, she did though, said Riser, before noticing Issei's stony expression. Didn't she, finished Riser, number, she didn't, the spoiled princess that is Rias Grimori, only thought of her own needs and desires. Her lowly pawn, one who literally sacrificed Lim to protect her interests, was chided for not understanding her and not being able to show his love to her. Apparently, nearly dying on multiple occasions just to keep a smile on someone's face, is not proof of one's love to another. I honestly think you are the lucky one, Riser. Despite it all, you never had your heart toyed with and broken to pieces by a woman you loved and would give your life for. Now though, if she was to express her undying love to me, I'd laugh in her face. Said Issei calmly, will you die for me? She is a true devil. Growled Issei unhappily. Riser was momentarily speechless and so, resumed walking, leading Issei once more, who promptly followed. Eventually, the duo reached a set of ornate double doors, easily three meters in height. Riser placed his hand against the door handle and prepared to open it, only to pause. No matter what happens or is said in there, please take care of my sister, Issei. As someone who understands heartbreak, please don't cause her the same and if you do not reciprocate her feelings, please be gentle with her. Said Riser, before opening the door and gesturing for Issei to enter alone. Issei walked past Riser and entered the room. As Riser made to close the door, he heard Issei mutter one last thing. I swear it, whispered Issei, before the doors shut behind him. Riser stared at the closed doors for a moment, before walking off. Thank you, Issei Hyodo, thought Riser, as he walked off, to go and check up on his sister. Chapter 9 Clash of Titans Issei entered the room and found it to be just as lavish as the rest of the Phoenix Manor. The only difference, a key one at that, was the presence of a woman, who looked like an older Ravel. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me on such short notice, Red Dragon. Said Lady Phoenix amicably, it was no trouble at all, I honestly had nothing better to do. Said Issei, studying the woman currently sitting in a rich red armchair, encrusted with rubies. Please sit, I've prepared some tea as well. Said Lady Phoenix, gesturing to a similarly fancy chair opposite her as well as a small table, holding two cups of tea on a pure silver tray. Issei obliged the older devil's wishes and made his way to the opulent chair, before sitting down. I've been told you wanted to speak to me, but not what it would concern. Said Issei, a hint of suspicion in his tone. Yes, I've not made my intentions for this conversation known to anyone. I would also prefer if you keep the details of this conversation private, between only us said lady phoenix calmly why would you want that if what you say can be harmful i won't lie to those i care about questioned issei sternly oh no nothing harmful although i am glad that you would not wish to hurt those close to you said lady phoenix i believe that for the rest of my life i will try not to considering how much i disliked it said issei bitterly i do extend my apologies for the recent falling out you experienced said Lady Phoenix kindly, with Issei's frown lessening slightly. In any case, what did you want to talk about? Asked Issei, hoping to move the conversation forward. Very well then, I will be honest, but in advance, forgive me for bringing up any bad memories for you, you see, when you broke Riser's engagement, our house suffered for it. Started Lady Phoenix, noting Issei's expression souring, at being reminded of the past. Well, with what happened, it has been tough for the phoenix, as far as our reputation is concerned. Continued Lady Phoenix, I don't see where you are going with this. Interjected, Issei bluntly, very well, let me hasten to the main point of this conversation then. The phoenix clan would very much like to form an alliance with you, the red dragon. As you can imagine, becoming an angel sent ripples through our society, so a link back to the devils, would do much to ease tensions. Explained Lady Phoenix, just why should I, I mean, I have nothing against you, but I don't particularly relish the idea of getting sucked back in, with all this devil business I've left behind. Queried Issei, well, we would require very little of you, in fact, almost nothing at all, barring you publicly approving of us, 
even just having a good relationship with some of our members, would be sufficient. Elaborated Lady Phoenix, so, this has to do with Ravel then? Asked Issei calmly, indeed, you see, as you may have guessed, I am familiar with the events that transpired recently and to be honest, while I am a devil, I can also see your point of view and can understand why you would react the way you did. Said Lady Phoenix, only for Issei to dryly laugh. You can understand the way I would react. With all due respect, the fact of the matter was, no one did understand me, so please don't act like you do. Said Issei sardonically, I never claimed to understand exactly how you felt merely that I could understand being hurt at being unappreciated. Of course, I have no idea how you felt personally, I was merely stating that your reaction was understandable, not your emotions at the time. Reiterated Lady Phoenix, which caused Issei to give a small hum, but not speak. However, your feelings are not what I wanted to discuss with you today, but rather, the feelings of another. Said Lady Phoenix calmly, Ravel, said Issei simply, getting a nod from Lady Phoenix. You see, she holds herself responsible for what happened, started Lady Phoenix, only for Issei to cut her off. What do you mean? Ravel had nothing to do with this at all. She did nothing wrong, said Issei in shock. I have told her as such, but she didn't seem too agreeable with me. I understand you have already told her you hold nothing against her, but if you could assure her on her innocence in the matter, I would greatly appreciate it. Continued Lady Phoenix, getting Issei to adopt a thoughtful expression and rub his chin in thought. After a brief lull, Lady Phoenix spoke up again. Would you mind if I speak honestly for a moment here? Asked Lady Phoenix, to which Issei quirked an eyebrow, but nodded nonetheless. I hope you have realized by now, but Ravel cares for you, that is, more than a friend. Said Lady Phoenix, getting a small nod from Issei. That being said, in light of what happened, she feels, unworthy, of pursuing her romantic interest in you, as she blames herself for what happened to you. To this end, I only ask that you be honest with her from this point on. If you return her feelings, please do make this obvious, as I'm sure you know now, the sense of unknowing and uncertainty can be crippling. Ravel is young, so should you break things off with her now, gently, she won't be too damaged by it, however, I simply ask that you don't string her along, if you don't return her feelings. Requested Lady Phoenix softly, I see, Riser asked me something similar and I'll give you the same general reply. I swear I won't hurt Ravel. Ravel is a friend of mine and perhaps something more. I can't say for sure yet, but I do like her. I will try to understand myself and my feelings for her as soon as possible, as I don't want to string her along. Confessed Issei honestly, that's all a mother could ask for, thank you. Said Lady Phoenix calmly. Issei gave a small nod, before grasping the cup of tea set for him, downed it and then stood up. If we are done here, I would prefer to meet up with Ravel and the others. Not to be rude, but while you and maybe a few others are fine with me, I don't think devil society, as a whole, is too pleased with me right now. Said Issei, of course, please, follow me. Requested Lady Phoenix, before standing up herself and walked to the door, with Issei following. As the duo walked through the extravagant building, Issei walked with a calm detachment, thinking on his most recent conversation. Lady Phoenix meanwhile, was content to walk in silence. After a few minutes, they reached another door, just as large and just as decorated as the one Issei had entered previously. This would be one of the living rooms in this house, closer to Ravel's room. No doubt, she would be here, I'm sure, after her little tour. Said Lady Phoenix. Thank you, said Issei calmly, before reaching for the handle. Also, one last thing I'd like to say. Ravel is still growing at this point, both mentally and physically, however, even among devils, they say, if you want to know what a daughter will look like when she grows up, look no further than her mother. Said Lady Phoenix, before giving a smile and turning on her heel and leaving. Whether voluntarily or not, Issei's eyes followed Lady Phoenix's form, as she walked away, paying close attention to the sway of her hips, before shaking his head. Not exactly what I was expecting from Ravel and Riser's mother, thought Issei in surprise. Issei opened the large door and was greeted to a room that was equally large and well furnished as the one he had left, only in this room, Irina, Zenovia and Ravel were present. Irina and Zenovia were sitting on a three-seater sofa, across from Ravel, 
on a three-seater of her own, both, in luxurious red upholstery. Ravel was sitting in the middle of her sofa, while Irina and Zinovia were sitting on either end of their sofa. Issei, you're back, exclaimed Ravel in surprise, as she had turned to face whoever had opened the door and cited Issei. Um yeah, shouldn't I be? asked Issei in confusion. Oh, no, of course not. I was just surprised. Mother usually talks for a while. I wasn't expecting you back for at least another hour. Said Ravel in embarrassment. Well, I didn't really want to leave you all alone for too long, so once we finished with the main reason for her wanting to talk to me, I requested to leave and then she brought me here. Explained Issei. Mother brought you herself? Asked Ravel in bafflement. Um yes. Said Issei questioningly. Ravel gave a small jump as a small magic circle appeared next to her ear, giving a few nods here and there. After a moment, she turned to Issei. Issei, would you like to have your battle with Sarawarg today? Asked Ravel curtly. Hum, sure why not? Said Issei, after a moment of thought. In that case, Issei accepts, shall we say one hour from now? Asked Ravel, communicating through the magic circle. After another pause, Ravel gave a small nod to herself, before the magic circle disappeared. Well, it seems you will be able to fight Sarawarg very soon. In fact, I'm actually quite surprised at how quickly everything has been organized. It seems that a great deal many, wanted to see the Red Dragon, face off against the strongest youth. Said Ravel, not to sound pessimistic, but are you sure you can handle Sarawarg, Issei? He is outrageously strong, asked Zenovia rubbing her stomach in memory of her battle with Sarawarg. Well, it has been a while since I fought with anyone, but considering that the last person I've fought with, was Kuroka, an outrageously strong devil in her own right, I think I can handle it. Said Issei thoughtfully, you do have the advantage of being an angel as well. Added Irina, yeah, but I'm thinking about not using my light powers against him, confessed Issei, surprising the others. Why? Asked Irina in confusion. Well, it's no secret that most devils aren't too happy with my change, so I was thinking it would be best to keep things under wraps. I still have the boosted gear and senjutsu though, so I don't think I'll be too inconvenienced. Explained Issei. Hmm, well, politically, that is a wise move, but are you sure you can combat Sarawarg otherwise? Asked Ravel carefully. Of course, I might not have the ability to promote, but with senjutsu, my body is more resistant my attacks are stronger, and my magical prowess is higher. It is like I am promoting when using it, so I don't really think it will be that difficult for me. Said Issei. Well, no matter what, we'll be cheering you on, right? Asked Irina. Yes, it will be a great battle too. Added Zenovia. Where will the fight be? Asked Issei. The same arena where Sarawarg had his most recent battle. Said Ravel hesitantly. I see, so the same place where Zenovia fought him, fitting, I suppose. Said Issei calmly. There was an extended pause at this point, reflecting the awkwardness around avoiding a certain Grimori's name. Should we make our way there now then? Asked Issei. Very well. It will take a minute or two to get there if we transport, but it will take a while to set up the circle to carry all of us. Said Ravel, before Issei plopped himself down beside her. Yan just let me know when it's ready. I might take a small nap now. Said Issei tiredly, before resting his left elbow on the armrest and then resting his head on his fist, closing his eyes. Line break. Issei felt a hand caressing his cheek and leant into it slightly. The hand was soft, soothing and made Issei smile. Oh, does that feel good, Issei? Asked a familiar voice which caused his eyes to snap open. There in front of him, was not Rainier, but rather, her other form, Yuma Amano. Isn't it bad enough that you taunt me, now you do it in two forms? Grumbled Issei. Fine, fine, I just thought you might appreciate a more innocent face. Said Yuma, before morphing back into Rainair. Scoff you are anything but innocent. Grumbled Issei. Oh, come now, Issei, compare me to all the others and you know I am just as innocent. I have to admit though, that lady, she's certainly wordier than I. Said Rainair, with a smirk. I'm not stupid, I know what Lady Phoenix was trying to do. Said Issei calmly, Rainair simply tapped her index finger on his nose. Yet you didn't call her on it. Sometimes Issei, I wonder if you like being pushed around and played with. 
First there was me, then Rias, now there's another. Said Rainer mockingly, causing Issei to growl. I hate you so much. Growled Issei. Oh, Issei, your words wound me, or at least they would, if they were true. Said Rainer, leaning closer to Issei. I do hate you, insisted Issei, even as Rainer drew closer to him. Oh, Issei, we both know that isn't the truth. Said Rainer, as she leaned in closer to Issei and briefly pressed her lips against his. Issei quickly pulled back and wiped his lips with his right hand, making Rainer laugh. I know you felt it, Issei. You know the truth. You just can't accept it. Said Rainer mockingly, before fading away. Line break. Issei grumbled as his eyes opened. That definitely wasn't one of his better dreams, but considering things, it wasn't his worst. Issei gave a big inhale and stretched his arms up, high over his head, before standing up. It seemed he had been left alone to rest, as Irina, Zenobia and Ravel weren't present. Issei walked to the door and opened it, only to be surprised, at who was on the other side. Riser, what are you doing here? Asked Issei in confusion, to take you to the transport point. When you woke up of course, said Riser, before walking off, with Issei following. So, how are things with you recently, Riser? Asked Issei. Your attempt at making small talk is amusing. Said Riser, with a grin. Well sorry for trying to be polite. Grumbled Issei. To answer your question, I've been training. I want to get back into raiding games sometime soon, so I'm preparing both myself and my peerage. Said Riser. Hum, I never would have pictured you for the training type. Confessed Issei. I wasn't, considering I had never lost before. I had only ever relied on my immortality, which was usually enough. Laughed Riser. I guess not many devils have access to holy water. Commented Issei getting Riser to laugh again. No, but I do enjoy it, it turns out. Admitted Riser. Holy water? Asked Issei in surprise. No, of course not. Training. There is something about it which makes me feel more alive. I suppose flames aren't meant to sit still, they are meant to rage and grow. Said Riser calmly. Well, good for you. Maybe next time we fight, you might actually stand a chance of beating me. Cheesed Issei. As I recall, we are even at one victory each, don't get cocky. Retorted Riser. Huh, I guess that's true. We'll need to have a tiebreaker soon then. Said Issei thoughtfully. Well first, you can fight Saraorg, I'll be watching in interest as well. Said Riser, before stopping in front of a door, once again, large and lavish. In that case, you're in for quite a show. Said Issei, with a smirk. I'm sure. Said Riser, before opening the door. Inside, were Ravel, Zenovia and Irina and in the center of the room, was a large, yellow, magic circle. Oh good, you're here. It's ready to go, said Ravel. You coming along for the ride, Riser? Asked Issei. Nah, I'll take myself, said Riser, before disappearing, with the use of his own magic circle. Show off, grumbled Issei. The four walked to the center of the circle, before Ravel flared her power and the circle activated rising up from the ground and turning them into particles of light. The group materialized in a spacious floor, with tables and exercise equipment around. Hum, it looks identical, commented Zenovia. Well, it wouldn't be changed, even for a one-on-one -on -one battle. In any case, we will go and watch from the stands. The battle will commence in five minutes, and an announcement will be made. Good luck, said Ravel, before the girls left Issei alone. Issei took deep breaths and waited, calming himself down helped him control his senjutsu. It was probably what helped lower his lust and gave Diedre more of a break from his perverted thoughts. Without a calm mind, senjutsu was dangerous, but with a calm mind, senjutsu proved an impressive tool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the special exhibition match today, between the strongest youth, Saraorg Bale and the Red Dragon Emperor, Issei Hiodo. Declared the announcer, causing Issei to open his eyes. It's time, said Issei calmly, as he stood up and walked to his entrance to the stadium. Issei ignored the announcer as he hyped up the event and explained the specifics of the battle. It didn't matter to Issei too much. Both combatants wouldn't quit and would keep fighting with any injuries they took. Both knew this fight would only end one way, with the other unconscious. Nothing else would suffice. Issei saw Saraorg march out, 
raising his right fist into the air. Issei looked up and saw Sarawarg's peerage looking on and cheering their hero. Issei gave a small smile at this, before hearing his own name called out and stepped out into the stadium as well. As Issei made his way towards Sarawarg, he was surprised to only hear cheers. It seemed, even with becoming an angel, the masses were still on his side. A few quick glances around though and Issei noticed the more official looking devils were not happy. Their stony gazes watched Issei carefully, studying his every move. Well, Red Dragon, I guess we will finally find out who was the strongest between us. Said Sarawurg, with a fearless smile. The strongest you say, commented Issei. Indeed, this will be a true test of power. Continued Sarawurg. In that case, what do you think about a purely physical battle? I must admit, it would be unfair of me to use light powers against you and I don't believe it would be wise of me to do so either. Propositioned Issei, are you underestimating me, Red Dragon? Asked Sarawurg, as his smile tightened. Of course not, but, I can't be as careless anymore, especially considering where I am. Does it not sound like an even fight? You're Tuki in my Senjutsu. We both know little magic and in a one-on-one -on -one battle, tactics are not very useful. Why not make this a battle of power? Who can trump the other with their bodies, no fancy or flashy tricks? Explained Issei. Haha, I must admit, that does sound interesting. I truly did want to fight you at your very best, but I can understand not wishing to endanger yourself. Laughed Sarawurg. It isn't myself that I worry for, rather, what may happen to others, to get to me. Said Issei, with a small frown. I see, in that case, I accept you challenge, a battle of pure strength my blood is boiling already. Declared Sarawurg. Awesome, in that case, shall we begin? Asked Issei. Sarawurg smirked, as a weird mark appeared on all four of his limbs. Shallow light started to pour out from Sarawurg's limbs, before the marks vanished. A huge explosion burst from Sarawurg. The wind pressure from the blast, formed a crater under him. Sarawurg's body was now bathed in a white glow, it was Tuki. Issei stood in front of Sarawurg, within the crater. I have to say, I'm impressed. If this was before, I would be hard pressed to match you, even with the boosted gear, however, I've not been sitting by idly for the past few weeks. Commented Issei, before black helical markings spread along his arms, neck and face. But I'm not the same person as I was before. Finished Issei, as the marks seemed to shatter and a reddish black glow surrounded him. The ground cratered even more around the two, as the audience watched in awe. In particular though, a certain red-haired observer watched with a pang of regret. Issei, you've become so strong, without us, thought Rias sadly. Sarawurg raised an eyebrow in surprise. I must say, I've never seen energy of this color before. Commented Sarawurg, it comes with being the red dragon, and also who trained me. My senjutsu was rather rough to begin with but with Diedrag's help along with my instructor, I was able to fit it to myself specifically. It not only draws on my life force, but Diedrag's as well, along with all the past wielders of the boosted gear. This is why, even if I do not directly use the boosted gear, in this state, I may as well be using it anyway. Explained Issei. How terrifying, you are an interesting person, Issei Hyodo. Said Sarawurg, with a wide smile. As are you, but enough talk. Now, it is time to speak with our fists. Said Issei, raising his right hand in front of him, red and black energy dancing around it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Said Sarawurg, before both launched their fists at each other. The crowd instantly flinched, as a massive explosion of light blinded them all momentarily. When the light cleared and everyone regained their vision, the crowd looked on in shock. Behind Issei's right and Sarawurg's left, were deep trenches behind them. The clash of fists had shot through both combatants and tore up the ground. Issei looked at his fist in surprise for a moment, bringing it back to his face, before smirking. Sarawurg too, gave a smirk, before both disappeared in a flash of light. The stadium was silent, as no one could see or hear anything, before a thunderous echo reverberated through the arena. Issei had launched an elbow at Sarawurg's head, with his right arm, while Sarawurg had blocked it with both palms. Sarawurg swung into action, bring his left fist into an uppercut aimed directly at Issei's solar plexus, 
only for Issei to harshly swing his right arm down and block the attack with his forearm, causing a massive explosion of energy on impact. The crowd gaped at the power behind each attack, before cheering loudly. The two disappeared once again, before another thunderous explosion was heard. Saruorg and Issei had both grappled each other, pushing against the other. It was a perfect stalemate, despite Saruorg's greater size. The two disappeared again, only to reappear, with their right knees slammed against each other's. In that brief moment, you could notice a smirk of amusement from both of them, before they disappeared again. Numerous explosions continued to ring out throughout the stadium, showing Issei and Saruorg momentarily for a moment, clashing, before disappearing again. The crowd roared in excitement, despite only seeing occasional flashes of the battle. After a few minutes of intense clashes, the duo started to slow down and stopped two meters away from each other, both appearing ruffled and slightly out of breath, but still largely uninjured. I must say Saruorg, this is one hell of a fight. I've never faced someone like you before, someone who throws themselves into battle this way. Commented Issei, I agree, it seems the two of us are quite alike throwing our bodies into the fight, with reckless abandon. Agreed Saruorg, with a grin. However, now with the test of speed out of the way, I think it is time to move on to the main event. Said Issei, as his aura swelled around him, causing wind to blow out from his position, pushing dust away from him. I can't wait, said Saruorg, as his power also flared, meeting Issei's in the middle causing a loud clash to reverberate, from their power alone. Line break. Wow. Issei is so strong, commented Irina in awe, watching the two release their energy. Yes, even when I fought Saruorg, his power was tremendous, but right now, I can feel it is even higher. I think he must have been training for his fight with Issei intensely, both before our battle and immediately following it. Added Zenovia, I never knew Issei was this strong though, muttered Ravel in surprise. Elsewhere, two glasses clad women were also watching the fight in interest. He is a completely different person than before, commented Sona, watching with a calculating gaze. Not only that, he has yet to use his sacred gear. This amount of power is terrifying, both his and Saruorg's, added Tsubaki, Sona's queen. Although, I'm sure he didn't plan this, but this will no doubt settle down many of the higher-ups, who were disgruntled with recent events. To be this strong without even using his sacred gear, a longinus at that, I don't think anyone would want to anger him. Added Sona, before refocusing on the fight. Line break. Well Saruorg, since neither of us is holding back anymore, let me say this in advance, this was a great fight and I look forward to a time, when we can both fight completely unrestrained. Said Issei, with a smirk. Haha, I hope I can have some time to train before then. You truly surpassed my expectations, even without using your powers of light and balance breaker you are almost a match for my full power. It is embarrassing, but also exciting. Keep getting stronger after this and I will do the same," said, Saruorg, before his power intensified again, pushing Issei's away and pushing him back slightly. Issei crossed his arms over his head, as Saruorg slammed an axe kick down on them. Issei quickly opened his hands and grabbed onto Saruorg's right leg and swung backwards, slamming Saruorg into the ground. Saruorg placed his hands down in front of him, cushioning the blow, in a modified push-up position, before twisting his body, throwing Issei to the side. Issei flipped in mid-air, slamming his hand on the ground to slow his movement, only to find Saruorg charging him with a right fist. Issei quickly charged to meet him and at the last moment, gave a right palm thrust to Saruorg's inner elbow, numbing it temporarily, before twisting his body and launching his left elbow into Saruorg's gut, stunning him. Saruorg bent over slightly, looming over Issei's left shoulder, only for Issei to grab the back of Saruorg's head in between his hands and run forward, before falling to the ground, slamming Saruorg's head against the ground, Issei's back hitting it as well. Issei quickly flipped over Saruorg and grabbed him around the waist, before giving a mighty heave and suplex the larger fighter over his head, slamming him head first into the ground. Issei didn't let go after his maneuver and picked Saruorg up again, quickly turned around, before hefting Saruorg up and harshly down, into another suplex. Saruorg quickly brought his legs up and slammed them into Issei's chest, breaking his hold, before roughly getting to his feet, blood trickling down his forehead, from a cut within his hairline. 
Sarawarg charged Issei again, this time, with a palm thrust of his own, and slammed it into Issei's right shoulder, spinning him, before launching a side kick into the small of Issei's back, propelling him towards the stadium wall. Issei slammed into the wall harshly, with a crunch, causing quite a few to cringe, at what sounded like bones breaking. Issei pulled himself out of the wall, only for Sarawar to suddenly appear behind him and push his face back into the wall. The wall suddenly vibrated, as Issei gave a deep growl and launched his right elbow back, nailing Sarawarg in his ribs, before spinning and launching a roundhouse kick, which sent Sarawarg into the stadium wall to Issei's left. Issei took the brief reprieve to crack his nose back into place, grimacing as he did so, before spitting out a wad of blood, from when he had bit his cheek, when Sarawarg slammed him into the wall the second time. Sarawarg clambered out of the wall as well, spitting out a wad of blood, as he moved his jaw around carefully. Issei grinned, before rushing Sarawarg again and tackled him into the wall. Issei somersaulted back, avoiding Sarawarg's downward punch at his back, before launching a push kick into Sarawarg's chest, slamming him back into the wall and digging further into the construct. Sarawarg then grabbed Issei's ankle and twisted. Issei turned with the motion, to avoid having his ankle shattered, but couldn't protect himself from Sarawarg's elbow slamming into his knee, causing him to cry out in pain, as the joint barely held on, under the immense power. Placing his hands on the ground, Issei twisted his legs, hoping to throw Sarawarg, but he released Issei's leg and slammed his fist into Issei's gut, cratering the ground under him and causing spittle and blood to fly from Issei's mouth. Issei recovered quickly and grabbed Sarawarg's arm, before throwing him over his legs, back towards the center of the stadium. Issei pushed as much energy into his legs as they could handle and charged after Sarawarg. As Sarawarg's body flew through the air, Issei was upon him and launched numerous punches along his torso, before disappearing once again and reappearing in front of where Sarawarg was flying. Issei crouched down and waited for Sarawarg to reach him, before launching a back kick into Sarawarg's back, launching him into the air. Sarawarg groaned at the recent onslaught he had experienced, before widening his eyes slightly, as Issei has appeared above him. Take this, shouted Issei, before slamming a double axe handle, right into Sarawarg's gut, sending him flying to the ground. The crowd gaped at the massive explosion that occurred, when Sarawarg impacted with the ground. The walls themselves were already cracked and would need repairs after the fight. The ground was cratered in numerous places and many wondered if the stadium would even last the match. Issei slowly fell to the ground, creating a small crater on impact when he landed and dropping down to one knee, breathing heavily. Blood was still running down his nose and out of his mouth. Issei ripped off his school blazer, wondering why he hadn't clothed himself in something more appropriate for fighting, as he then ripped off his white, long-sleeved dress shirt, leaving him clad in his red t-shirt showing his muscles and also, quite a few welts on his arms, from blocking Sarawarg's hits, as well as the impact of launching his own attacks. His pants were also frayed, revealing his ankles and the lower part of his shins. Sarawarg groaned, as he stood up from the crater, taking a full 10 seconds to get back to a vertical base. His white vest was in tatters after the onslaught it had taken and his black bodysuit was torn in many places, revealing fresh blood, dripping from his arms. I must say, this has been one of the most enjoyable and also most painful fights I've ever experienced. You are truly a worthy opponent, so much so, that I no longer feel worthy to witness your full power, if I'm losing this badly when you are handicapped. Said Sarawarg, panting as he did so. Well, you're not making it easy for me either. Chuckled Issei weakly, I'm not sure how much longer my body will hold together, so what do you say to one last attack, to finish this? Proposition Sarawarg, sure, why not, agreed Issei, with a grin. The crowd had been cheering wildly for the past 10 minutes, but neither Issei, not Sarawarg could hear them anymore. They were too immersed in their battle to care. Issei and Sarawarg both gathered energy to their right fists, their oars concentrating solely to their fists, leaving the rest of their bodies. Fatigue was setting in for both and just doing this was a task, but do it they did. Issei stood to his feet and Sarawarg strengthened his stance. The two faced off, both grinning fearlessly, before they burst at each other. The two reared their fists back and swung, causing an explosion of energy and blinding everyone temporarily. As the spots dancing in everyone's vision started to fade, 
They saw Issei with his right fist lodged into Saroorg's gut, a solid uppercut to the solar plexus, doubling him over slightly. Saroorg had launched a wicked cross, right into Issei's jaw, tilting his head to the side. There was silence for a moment, as the crowd waited with bated breath to see who would fall. Issei dropped to his right knee, stopping himself from meeting the ground with his left fist. The crowd was just about to cheer for Saroorg's victory, when the devil, wobbled unsteadily on his feet and fell, right onto Issei's shoulder. You're amazing Saroorg, you were barely holding on at the end there. You took my hit and weren't even conscious anymore, but you still managed to land your blow on me. You are truly a worthy opponent as well, muttered Issei. Issei weakly raised himself and Saroorg to their feet, before raising his left fist high into the sky, in victory. The crowd's roar was deafening, eardrum shattering. A fight such as this was truly worthy of praise and the spectators showed it. Issei struggled to carry Saroorg away, before Saroorg's queen, a beautiful blonde-haired girl, came and took him from Issei, despite the difference in size between the two. Issei breathed a sigh of relief, and turned towards his waiting room. He took one step, before his eyes closed and fell forward, unconscious. Chapter 10 It's All in Your Head Issei gave a small groan, as he returned to consciousness. It took a moment for Issei to remember what had happened. After a minute, he realized he had passed out, after his fight with Saroorg, and fallen flat on his face. Yeah, that must have hurt, commented a voice, which made Issei freeze. Looking to his left, Issei saw milky white skin, covered in threadbare leather attire. As his gaze traveled upwards, he saw two distinct wings. Black wings, wings of a fallen angel. Hesitantly, Issei raised his head the rest of the way and gazed at the visage of the person standing to his right. He could never mistake those violet eyes, coupled with an ironically angelic face and long black hair. Hi Issei, missed me? Asked Rainer in amusement. Issei merely started at Rainer with a scrutinizing gaze, before weakly raising his right hand to his face and pinching his cheek, as hard as he could. Oh don't be like that, it's not a dream, I'm here, with you, Issei. Cooed Rainer, leaning closer to Issei. Issei kept his gaze on Rainer, even as she walked closer to him. If this was a dream, Issei was ready to wake up right now. As it stood, he was exhausted and even someone like Rainer, weak as she was, would have a reasonable chance of killing him. Issei weakly tried to sit up, away from the smiling visage that was approaching him, only to hear someone open the door to his room, causing both him and Rainer to look at it. Once the door opened, Ravel was revealed, looking somewhat tired, but she perked up upon seeing Issei. Issei, you're awake, exclaimed Ravel in joy. Issei couldn't return her enthusiasm, as he glanced to Rainer, who Ravel seemed completely oblivious of. I'm, awake, asked Issei slowly. Of course you are, said Ravel, as she approached Issei from his left side, opposite Rainer. Your match was spectacular, however, after Saroorg was carried away by his queen, you passed out and I brought you back here. Explained Ravel, it was at this point, that Issei took in his surroundings and noticed that for a hospital, or medical bay, the area was rather decorative. Lots of precious metals and stones dotted the room, even his sheets were silk. Issei glanced over to Rainer again, before turning back to Ravel. How long have I been out for? Asked Issei. Almost a full twelve hours now, said Ravel, with a hint of worry in her tone. Issei's eyes widened in surprise. What about Saroorg? Asked Issei. He woke up an hour ago. It is possible you needed longer to recover because he landed his attack to your head. Answered Ravel. I see, said Issei thoughtfully. I'm surprised though, Issei. I mean, what's the difference between her and that red-haired bitch? Both are pure devils, both are spoilt princesses, both have doting families. Really, what's the difference? Is it the blonde hair? Maybe you like younger girls. I guess you must be a masochist, considering that this will probably go the same way. Said Rainer, finishing with a shrug. If you are feeling better, you can get up and walk around for a bit. Said Ravel softly. Issei grunted, before trying to get up. Ravel quickly went to Issei's side and helped him sit up, supporting his shoulder and holding his hand. Issei turned and let his feet rest on the ground, noticing that he was still in the same clothes he had been. Wearing at the conclusion of his fight, tattered pants and all. Issei stood up, 
with Ravel standing very close to him, before cracking his neck to the left and rolling his right shoulder. I'm okay, said Issei to Ravel, who gave a small smile. Whatever, it isn't like I've been watching over you all this time. Muttered Ravel, with a small blush on her cheeks. Issei chuckled and patted Ravel on the hair, causing her blush to intensify. Hum, that must be it, you like little girls, don't you? Quipped Rainair. Issei firmly ignored her and made for the door, with Ravel quickly walking in front of him and opening the door herself. When Issei stepped into the hallway, his eyes widened when he saw Rainair resting against the wall to his right. Issei quickly looked back and saw that she was no longer in the room they had just left. Is something wrong Issei? Did you forget something? Asked Ravel in concern. No, I'm fine, said Issei, giving Ravel a small smile. As the duo walked, Issei couldn't help but notice that Rainair was walking right next to him. I mean, a girl with this much money, why would she want someone like you? Obviously for your status, but really, it isn't like you have much else to offer. Said Rainair, with faux sadness. Ravel led Issei back to the room he had taken his nap in, before going to the game and saw Irina and Zenovia sitting there, as they had before. Issei, we were so worried about you! Exclaimed Irina, with a nervous expression. Yes, that was an excellent fight as well. Added Zenovia. Oh look, two traitors. Well, I suppose that isn't really true, since they were never on your side to begin with. Quite frankly, I'm surprised you actually believed them. It's laughable, said Rainer in amusement. I'm fine, said Issei reassuringly. Fine, that's funny, if you had jokes like that for me on our date, I might not have killed you. Laughed Rainer. Anyway, with that out of the way, I was thinking it might be a good idea to go home and rest. Said Issei. Yes, that would be the smart thing to do. I'll get a magic circle ready for you. Said Ravel, before leaving Issei alone with Irina and Zenovia. To think, you honestly thought these two cared for you. Then again, you thought I cared for you as well, so clearly you're a bad judge of people's intentions. I mean, I could have seen that red-haired skank using you a mile away. Say what you will about me, but when I turned on you, I was upfront about. She just kept manipulating you behind her smile. I'm almost envious of how manipulative she is. Said Rainer, becoming wistful towards the end. How are you feeling, Issei? Asked Irina worriedly. I told you, I'm fine, really. Said Issei, with a small laugh. Rainer laughed along with Issei, but for different reasons. Okay, if you're sure. Said Irina reluctantly. How did you become so strong Issei? You didn't even use your boosted gear, yet you beat Saraorg and he is no pushover, I'd know. Questioned Zenovia, lightly brushing her stomach in memory. Ah, betrayal is a beautiful thing isn't it? Nothing serves to push someone more, am I right, Issei? Quipped Rainer playfully. Just training I suppose. Senjutsu is really powerful, especially for brute strength. Said Issei. Of course she wants to know. After all. If she can use you to get stronger, why wouldn't she stick around? Questioned Rainer. It's ready, said Ravel, as she re-entered the room and gestured for them to follow her. I have to say though, compared to the Red Whore, this one has a much nicer house. Commented Rainer, looking to the roof. Issei looked at Rainer, who quickly matched his gaze. What? You know it's true. They might have had dozens of butlers and maids, but they had nowhere near this much gold, or anyway close to the number of jewels of seen in this place said rainer as the four walked over to the circle rainer stood off to the side see you at home isei giggled rainer blowing isei a kiss isei pursed his lips as his form was vaporized before reappearing in his living room isei sighed for a moment before a figure walked out from his bedroom welcome home isei i've missed you teased rainer putting on a faux sad expression and placing her index finger on her lips. Girls, sorry if this is abrupt, but I think I'm going to go take a nap, I'm still pretty tired after everything. Said Issei weakly, giving a small smile. Of course, it would be best that you rest as much as possible, so you can recover quickly. Said Ravel, with the other two nodding. Thanks, I'll see you all later. Said Issei, walking to his bedroom. Oh, is this your way of saying you want to get down and dirty? My Issei, 
I never expected you to go straight from a grueling battle to a battle in the sack. Said Rainair in surprise, before smirking. Issei ignored the fallen angel, but made sure to close his bedroom door. Not like it helped, since she was lying down on the bed. Come on Issei, what's that expression? Oh right, paint me like one of your French girls. Heard Rainair. Issei walked to the bed and slid in next to Rainair, before turning his back on her. Oh, playing hard to get her we. That's fine, I have plenty of time. I'm not going anywhere after all. Good night Issei, said Rainair sweetly, blowing a kiss to Issei, before laughing. Line break. Issei awoke the next day, feeling two mounds pressing against his back. Issei stiffened, before feeling two tails wrapped around his legs. Oh, this one is hilarious Issei. I guess you do like bad girls. Although, you could barely touch me, even after I skewered you. Said Rainair, standing in front of Issei, leaning against the door. Rainair walked over to Issei, looming close to his face. I'm sure you wanted me to be the one to take your virginity though, didn't you? Don't deny it, I know the truth after all. Said Rainair, with a smirk. Issei tried to get up only to find Kuroka had also wrapped her arms around his midsection. I bet you think she is holding you like that because she cares about you. Sorry Issei, but she only wants your kids, you yourself are just a sperm donor to her. It isn't like she only wanted you, after all, she did ask the white dragon as well. You just happened to be the one to agree to being breeding stock. Sai so sad, at least I pretended to actually care for you, before taking what I wanted said Rainair sadly. After a bit of struggling, Issei managed to free himself from Kuroka's embrace and finally decided to change his clothes. However, given his odor, he decided to shower first. As Issei grabbed his robe and carried it to the shower, he sighed upon opening the door and seeing Rainair there, waiting for him. What, you saw me naked, it's only fair I get to see you naked as well. Said Rainair calmly. Issei paused for a full minute, before sighing and stripping out of his damaged clothes. Well, it's good to see you've buffed up at least a little since then. You were pretty scrawny after all. No wonder you couldn't get a girl, commented Rainair. Issei gave a small huff, before undressing completely and entering the shower. The shower wasn't particularly large, but it could probably fit three people comfortably. Obviously, Issei hadn't tested that to be sure though. Grabbing his shampoo and lathering his hair, Issei scrubbed for half a minute, before closing his eyes and washing off the suds. Opening his eyes again, Issei saw Rainair standing in front of him, only now, she was naked. Want me to wash your back for you, Issei? I know you want me to. Heard, Rainair. Issei turned around, as he grabbed the soap and started to spread soap across his arms and upper body. Oh, I see how it is, you'd rather I wash something else, wouldn't you, Issei? Teased Rainair from behind Issei, who resolutely ignored her. It's nothing to be embarrassed about, I am a fallen angel after all. Seduction is our greatest talent. Quipped Rainair. Issei ignored Rainair, but finished up as quickly as he could. After dressing in his undergarments, Issei quickly realized, that even though he had been out for a while, it was still the weekend. Sunday to be precise. Deciding a trip to heaven may help, Issei grabbed a plane, red, short-sleeved shirt and black jeans, dressed quickly, then made his way to his living room. Issei concentrated, causing his halo to appear above his head. Giving a small chant, a white line split down the middle of his apartment in front of him, before manifesting into a large door, which slowly opened, spewing bright white light. Issei walked through, before finding himself outside a pair of large gates, surrounded by marble structures. Calmly, Issei walked through the gates, emerging into a white fluffy area, which extended as far as the eye could see, before heading to the elevator. As he made his way through, he greeted everyone, who greeted him in turn. While the devils may have been unhappy at what happened, many in heaven were delighted. While the fallen angels, at one point, had the white dragon and the devils had the red dragon, heaven was left without a dragon. That isn't to say they were disadvantaged, Dulio was a true force to be reckoned with, but having a dragon of their own, eased their souls. As the elevator finally reached the sixth floor, Issei made his way to where he knew the seraphs would be. It was rare for all of them to be present and today was no exception, but both Michael and Gabriel were present and of all people, Dulio was there as well. 
Ah, hello Issei, I trust you have been well. Greeted Michael, once he noticed Issei. Yes, things have been going well recently. Replied Issei, with a smile. Wow, I've never been to this level before. Funny to think a shameless pervert like you, actually managed to get up here. Said Rainer, walking past Issei and looking around in awe. Well, for the most part. Amended Issei, his smile shrinking slightly. Is something wrong Issei? You know I'm always willing to listen to anything you would like to discuss. Said Gabriel pleasantly. Seriously, her boobs are huge, even bigger than mine, much as I hate to admit it. How did someone like you get rescued by someone like her? Commented Rainer in shock. I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to speak with you sometime soon, but I came today in hopes that you may have need of me. I've been growing somewhat restless I'm afraid. Confessed Issei nervously. Hum, I don't mind if he comes along with me. It would be nice to have some company. Said Dulio, giving his input. I see, in that case, Issei, there have been a few reports recently, of something rather disturbing. A rather unnatural energy source, near Romania. It is close to the dominion of the vampires, but not actually within the territory itself. It has gotten our attention, as the feeling is similar to the output of Elongenus. We have no idea if it is controlled or not, nor who it may be coming from. Ideally, you should only scout the area for information, but if a conflict is unavoidable, do try to not let it escalate and return as quickly as possible. We have never been on good terms with the vampires and are investigating so close to their area, is bound to cause tension. Explained Michael, no worries, if we need to remain undetected, I'll be able to cloak both Dulio and myself, with key. Said, Issei, in that case, you can leave whenever you are ready. Said Michael calmly, all right, let's do this Dulio. Cheered Issei, you're rather enthusiastic, commented Dulio in amusement. What can I say? I've had a lot on my mind and this sounds like just the thing, to help distract me from my current thoughts. Said Issei, oh, you can try, but we both know I'm going to be on your mind, whether you like it or not. Teased Rainer, leaning over Issei's right shoulder, whispering into his ear. Line break, Issei and Dulia were walking through a dark and slightly foggy, mountainous terrain. There were numerous mountains in the distance and off to the west, a civilization could be made out. A rather large town from appearances, but, it was in fact, the location of the vampires. The two jokers were a good distance away though, appearing only as tiny specks in the distance, to anyone who would try to spot them, enhanced vision or not. What are you eating, Dulio? Asked Issei, noticing Dulio was eating a rounded, cylindrical sandwich. Hum, I believe this is known as a kebab, replied Dulio, taking another bite. And exactly where did you get it from? Asked Issei in surprise. I always carry a few types of food with me. It helps make longer journeys more interesting. Replied Dulio. Issei blinked in confusion, before giving a slight shake of his head and ignoring it. Dulio and food had an interesting relationship, one that was best not attempted to be understood. Issei had found out, that Dulio was a food aficionado, but not out of gluttony. He brought back any new and exciting foods he found to children of various orphanages, hoping to give them a taste of exotic cuisine and buoy their spirits. Issei had also heard, that upon hearing about a new food, Dulio would become unreachable. I just wonder what could be so important, to rile up the higher-ups. Muttered Issei. Funny, that rhymed. If anything though, I would think it would be a longinous of some sort. Said Dulio calmly, taking another bite. Ugh. Not another one. Why do I always happen to run into overpowered people? Lamented Issei. That's funny, considering you were the poster boy for overpowered. Light powers, senjutsu and the ability to boost your abilities indefinitely, isn't exactly mundane. Retorted Dulio cheerfully. And complete control over the elements is nothing, right? Quipped Issei. Well, I'd still say you are the more powerful one in brute strength. I may be more versatile but you hold the capacity for devastating singular attacks. Said Dulio pleasantly, as he finished his snack. Hi Kettle, I'm Pot. Scoffed Issei, getting a smile from Dulio. So, what has been troubling you lately, Issei? Asked Dulio calmly. Me, troubling you, how rude, I thought I was your girlfriend. Said Rainer, from beside Issei. Just some stuff from my past. Said Issei, with a small grumble. 
You know Issei, living in the past is dangerous. If we had continued to do that, our faction might not even exist anymore and neither of us would be angels right now. Said Dulio happily. Yeah, I'd be dead too. Snorted Issei. Come now Issei. Gabriel wouldn't want you to act like this, especially after how much you two bonded. Said Dulio, with a sad smile. I guess. Said Issei quietly. The two continued walking, before feeling a spike of energy. That felt rather powerful, wouldn't you say? Asked Dulio. Yeah, and I felt an almost dragon-like presence, but it felt warped. Commented Issei. Issei paused for a moment and expanded his senses, before feeling a very strong power. I'm cloaking us now, whatever that thing is, it is best we avoid it. A battle would bring way too much attention to us, said Issei, before expanding his key cloak, over both Dulio and himself. The duo, followed the source of the power, with Issei leading the way. As they climbed over a moderately sized hill, they saw a deep basin, with an eerie purple glow coming from it. I'm guessing that is what we are looking for, muttered Issei. Dulio looked over the area carefully, before stretching his awareness through the wind. That is definitely a Longinus, commented Dulio seriously, before the two heard a low rumble, followed by the sound of heavy wingbeats. Quick, get down, exclaimed Issei, pulling Dulio to the ground. It was just barely quick enough, as a dark green, western dragon, shot into the sky after that flying away in the direction, opposite of the nearby vampire settlement. I guess your search is over then, since that was Grendel. Spoke Diedrig, manifesting on Issei's hand. What do you mean, why is the search over? Asked Issei. I myself fought with Grendel long ago. That being said, after I was sealed into this gear, I've been listening out for the other dragons as well, not just Albion. Started Diedrig, your point being, asked Issei. Grendel was slain by Beowulf, said Diedrich simply. I see, that does indeed end our search, since only one sacred gear could possibly be behind this. To think, the Holy Grail would be here of all places. Said Dulio seriously, we better head back then, said Issei, to which Dulio nodded. Line break, the Holy Grail you say, that is troubling, said Michael, as a frown crossed his gentle features. Do you know who might be behind it? Asked Issei curiously, no, nothing definite, but given how quiet Chaos Brigade has been lately, there is a possibility they may be behind it. Additionally, given the location, it may also be the vampires. Said Michael thoughtfully, Dulio and Issei exchanged slightly worried looks, before Michael spoke again. In any case, well done on your successful mission. I suppose the others and I should deliberate on how to respond to this and liaise with the other factions as well. You are both free for now, said Michael, causing Dulio to give a smile. Splendid, I heard of a particularly interesting cuisine in France, so I might pop by for a visit, said Dulio cheerfully, before giving a small bow and heading off. Issei couldn't help but chuckle at his counterpart. Dulio was truly unique in how positive he could be at all times. Shame you're nothing like him. I mean, you weren't even religious when you became an angel and you were full of lust. I suppose being the Red Dragon Emperor, will keep saving you, time and time again. Said Rainer in disappointment. Gabriel, if your offer is still available, could we go for a chat? Asked Issei. Gabriel smiled beautifully and even seeing Rainer in the corner of his eye, Issei couldn't help but smile as well. Gabriel's presence had become somewhat of a lifeline for him and when she was happy, so was he. Of course, come, we can walk past Eden. Said Gabriel happily. Michael waved the two off, as they headed for the elevator. The elevator ride was short, but Gabriel was humming cheerfully and brought a smile to Issei's face once again. As the two exited the lift, Issei was astounded at what was in front of him. No matter how many times they came by, Issei always held his breath a little, upon seeing the majestic beauty, which was, the Garden of Eden. A horticulturist would probably give their soul just to see the splendid sight. Numerous plants, exotic and common decorated the entire area. Hues of green melded seamlessly with light blue, shifting to purple and dark reds. Bright flowers of yellow, orange and pink were scattered throughout the much larger trees that reached upwards. Gabriel followed a well-traveled path, leading Issei to her favorite location and the common place for their conversations. A, 
gigantic trunk leading up into numerous strong branches and abundant large foliage. The sycamore tree had been a common fixture in all of their conversations and just looking at it calmed Issei. So tell me Issei, what's troubling you? Asked Gabriel kindly, as she knelt down on the soft grass. Issei mirrored Gabriel and knelt down as well, taking a moment to gaze at the large tree next to them. I've been having troubling visions and unpleasant memories recently. It started with only simple phrases that caused me discomfort, but it has progressed to me having conversations with my fears and even seeing apparitions. Said Issei uncomfortably. I see. I know it may be hard for you Issei, but the more honest you are with me, the more I can help you. Said Gabriel patiently, which caused Issei to sigh. I've been seeing and hearing Rainer again. Confessed Issei tiredly feeling all his strength drain from him, at the simple admission. Gabriel's beautiful smile momentarily shrunk, before returning to normal. If it isn't too much for you, I would like to hear more. Requested Gabriel kindly. Well, before, it was just the same line she said to me before she killed me, but just recently I started having conversations with her in my dreams. After yesterday, I've started seeing her form in my mind, speaking and commenting on everything around me. Even right now, I can see her form standing next to you, looking at me with a mocking smile. Said Issei wearily. Gabriel frowned at this, looking to her sides briefly and indeed, did not see anyone. I see, commented Gabriel. See, now she will write you off as a lunatic and throw you away like all the others. Commented Rainer happily, which caused her to frown, at what Gabriel did next. Gabriel had stood up and moved over to Issei knelt beside him, and brought his head to the space between her bosom and her right shoulder, with her left hand, resting his head gently against her, as her right hand gently stroked the back of his head. Issei, no matter what, Rainer is a part of you. As unfortunate as it may be, it is the truth. Started Gabriel, causing Issei to sigh softly. However, she doesn't define you. You are a special person Issei. Continued Gabriel, yeah, special because of your gauntlet whipped Rainer, with a smirk, which was wiped off her face when Gabriel continued. It has nothing to do with being the host of Deidre, but rather, because of your heart. Even before, when your mind was awash with lust, you were still caring and kind. You fought to protect your friends solely because you felt it was the right thing to do, not out of a sense of duty. Said Gabriel calmly, pulling Issei's head off her and looking him in the eyes. Yeah, look how that worked out for you scoffed Rainer. I know that things did not turn out as you would have wished and I am deeply sorry for what you had to endure, but you did endure it and survived, because you are strong. Finished Gabriel, smiling at Issei brightly. I only survived because you reincarnated me, muttered Issei weakly. That may be the case, but not everyone can be turned into an angel Issei. There are three ways, as I'm sure you know. The first, is through devout worship, the second, through strong faith and the third, do you remember Issei? Asked Gabriel calmly, to have a kind heart. Said Issei, with a small smile, causing Rainer to grunt. Exactly, you are the one who survived. You are the one who persisted and you are the one who held strong. Issei, as I have said before, no matter what happens, you will always have my love. It is yours to have and I will never take it from you. Remember Issei, though you have suffered much and gained little, I will never ask you for more than you can give and you have my love. Forever. Remember those words Issei. Engrave them in your heart and no matter what happens, no matter what trials and tribulations you may face, you will always have me on your side, that is my assurance to you. While Rainer may be a part of you, remember also, that I am too. Even if she troubles your heart and mind with doubts, remember that I will be here for you, always. Said Gabriel kindly. The sincerity in Gabriel's words warmed Issei's heart. True, Rainer was still there, a little off to the side and sporting a grimace, as she gagged, but Issei couldn't care less. Thanks Gabriel, that really helped a lot, said Issei softly. Gabriel smiled and kissed Issei on the crown of his head. Of course, Issei, you have no need to worry. I will be with you forever. Throughout it all, you can always come to me if your heart is heavy, said Gabriel, with a smile. Issei wasn't quite sure what came over him at that moment and it would still be on his mind for weeks to come, but without warning, Issei leaned forward and kissed Gabriel herself, right on her lips. 
Gabriel was surprised at the action and even the apparition of Rainer looked on gobsmacked. Issei quickly retracted his head, with a huge blush on his face. F forgive me Gabriel, I'm not sure what came over me. Stuttered Issei nervously, only for Gabriel to laugh softly. It is fine, Issei. I told you, no matter what, you have my love. Angels are not beings without emotions, if we were, the fallen would have never existed. Said Gabriel reassuringly, Issei risked a quick glance to Gabriel and upon seeing her smile, relaxed slightly. I I see, said Issei, calming down slightly. Issei, if you love me in such a manner, do not be embarrassed. When God created both Adam and Eve, in this very garden, it was always the natural way of things, for man to love woman and for woman to love man. I see no reason why we could not pursue the same intimate relationship, as I know your heart is pure and you know mine. Said Gabriel softly, Eh are you sure? Asked Issei in surprise, Of course, you have suffered much and gained little, but if being with me eases your soul, I would be happy to explore our feelings together. Answered Gabriel happily, Issei simply smiled, I would like that said Issei happily. Line break. Gabriel, is there something you wish to tell me? Asked Michael. Once Gabriel returned, without Issei. Issei has been experiencing uncomfortable recollections of his past. Explained Gabriel. I see. Said Michael solemnly. I believe I was able to calm his heart, so much so, that he has officially expressed his interest in pursuing a romantic relationship with me. Said Gabriel. I I see. Said Michael in surprise, his eyes widening slightly. Yes, I could tell after a few weeks of interacting with me, he had begun to develop feelings, but I didn't expect them to grow to this level. Commented Gabriel thoughtfully, what are your feelings on the matter? Asked Michael curiously, I can comfortably say I love Issei, as I love everyone, whether it is something more than that, I am unsure, but I am willing to attempt it. We are beings of love after all, said Gabriel, I see, I wish you my best then. It is rare for angels to interact in such a manner, but if it is through love, I'm sure the outcome will be good. Said Michael optimistically. Line break. Issei, meanwhile, was still in shock at what he had done. I kissed Gabriel, thought Issei in shock. What the hell, how could you kiss another person, with me standing right there? Shouted Rainer indignantly. I kissed Gabriel, I really did. Continued Issei, completely ignoring Rainer. Hey. Pay attention to me, snapped Rainer, clicking her fingers in front of Issei, as he sat down on his couch, unmoving. I, actually kissed Gabriel, me, muttered Issei aloud. There was a loud thud outside Issei's door, before someone quickly entered his house and grabbed him by the collar. What, what did you say? Asked Azazel, his eyes nearly popping out of his head. I, kissed Gabriel, muttered Issei, unaware of Azazel completely. Azazel looked at Issei in shock for a minute, before engulfing him in a hug. Issei, I hereby declare you, the one true inheritor of my will. My son, I'm so proud of you, cried Azazel tearfully. Rainer just sighed in the background. Great, now the only person who can actually hear me, is a freaking vegetable. Grumbled Rainer sourly. That's all for now till next time.